Welcome to getting started with InCover 4 Desktop. In this video, we're going to walk through installation and registration, setting up a project, collecting coverage, and browsing the coverage data. First, let's start the desktop installer. You should get a link to the current installer in an email from InCover when you purchase a license, request a trial, or visit the InCover website. There are also options to install the Visual Studio 2008 and 2010 plugins, but I'll just install Desktop today. Once InCover Desktop is installed, it will prompt you to launch the application in your browser. Desktop opens in a separate tab to a local host address. Desktop defaults to 127.0.0.1 port 11235, but you can modify this address. Now Desktop is prompting you to activate your copy. If you also have InCover Code Central installed, you can connect to it now. But today we'll just be using Desktop as a standalone application, so we'll enter our key code and email address. Your key code will be contained in an email from InCover when you download a trial or purchase a copy of InCover Desktop. We'll add an email address and then click Activate Key Code. Success! Now our copy of Desktop is registered. After registration, we can review the help docs or click to create our first project right away. I'm going to name this project after the test application I'll use for this demo, a game called Code Blaster. Code Blaster was created by our dev team to make demonstrating code coverage more fun. Now to set up the project. I can manually enter processes I want desktop to monitor here in the match rules, or I can let AutoConfig automatically create project settings for me. I click on Auto Configure. The Auto Configure window opens and now Desktop is ready to monitor a process and automatically create match rules and filters. Let's demonstrate Auto Config using the Code Blaster game. I'll open Code Blaster and we'll see how the game demonstrates basic code coverage. The Code Blaster game has two modes. One to play the demo, and another one that simply runs the code. Let's play the game and see the code coverage in action. The object of the game is to destroy the alien bugs. Every bug vaporized on each of the five levels represents a separate algorithm. There goes heap sort. As the algorithms run, the code is profiled by InCover 4 Desktop. So destroying these aliens is equivalent to running a unit test on a DLL. There's a machine gun mode to increase the rate of alien destruction. Watch each algorithm highlighted on the scoreboard as bugs are eliminated. There go another five algorithm bugs. For the truly impatient, I mean efficient tester, there's a bomb to destroy all the bugs at once. When I'm done playing, I mean testing, I close the app so I can take a look at the code that desktop has detected while the game was running. While we've been playing Code Blaster, InCover has been profiling the modules loaded by the executable. I'll stop detection. Then I can look at the modules that Desktop has auto-detected. Desktop first detected the Code Blaster exe, and then as I played, it detected the algorithm modules as they were loaded, Box2DX and Algorithms. I can deselect any modules I don't want to cover, but I do want to cover the Code Blaster XE, so I reselect it. Then I can look at the match rule that has been auto created. 
The auto created match rule is type exe and contains the path to the Code Blaster executable. This means Incover will profile Code Blaster whenever it is run from that path. If we want Incover to profile Code Blaster regardless of the path, we can make the rule a regex. Replace the file path with the name of the executable only and select regex from the type dropdown. Now desktop will profile Code Blaster whenever it detects the executable regardless of where it starts. When I look at the pre-coverage filter tab I see that filters have been created for the two DLLs. I could also exclude the exe here simply by changing the include to an exclude from the dropdown. On the Thresholds tab, I can set the limits for, limits for acceptable code coverage for this project. I'll change the default threshold to numbers that are reasonable for my coverage goals. Then click Save to preserve all my project settings and return to the Projects view. Now my project is set up and I'm ready to collect coverage. I'll start Code Blaster again and this time I'll just run the code. The now collecting light shows me that desktop is collecting data on the first module even before the GUI displays. As we saw earlier, Code Blaster has two modes. This time we'll just run the, run the code, then close the application so that desktop will aggregate and display the coverage data. When the coverage data is ready, desktop displays my first execution, a series of data points about the code I just executed. The branch coverage, sequent points coverage, and max complexity bars are color coded based on my selections on the threshold tab. On the right side of the project view, I see when this project was last run and an overview of important statistics. Now I'll drill through the coverage data and take a look at some key features of desktop along the way. The next level is the execution view, which will display the individual cover runs and their timestamps. At every level of desktop from here down, you'll see the same basic windows of the desktop interface. The statistics slider at the top provides a fast way to scroll through all 11 of the coverage metrics and the coverage navigator at the bottom displays a list of completed executions and their summaries as you scroll across. Click on an execution to drill down to the next level, Modules. I'll pick a DLL that has low coverage and drill down on it. Then drill down on the namespace with the lowest coverage, which means it has the most untested code. On the assembly view, I'll also pick the area with the most untested code and drill down again. Down to the method view to find the code with the lowest coverage number. which brings me to the source view where the link shows me what source document I'm viewing. In the lower right corner of the source code window, simple red and green coloring of the words covered or uncovered indicates the coverage status. The number of visit counts is also displayed in this pop-up when hovering. Clicking the link brings up the entire source doc if it's available on the local machine. Branch visualization, a graphical display of the possible paths through the highlighted code, is displayed beside the line numbers to the left of the source code. The branch visualization is dynamic, changing to display the code paths your pointer is currently over.
Finally, the breadcrumb trail at the top of the window shows where you are in the coverage data by project, execution, module, document, namespace, and method. The breadcrumb trail also gives you access to other views of your data like the document view and lets you easily move back up as many levels as you like. I've highlighted a few key features of InCover 4 Desktop today, and we'll be exploring more of Desktop's functionality as well as other NC4 products in videos to come. Please let us know what you think and what else you'd like to see.